Hello, and welcome to part 3, the basic stamp 2, tutorial for robots. I'm Microsoft Sven, and I'll be your narrator. Forgive me, for my bad English. After all I'm just a machine. The idea of the infinite loop, is running our code constantly, without ever stopping. This, is giving us the opportunity to always communicate and exchange data with basic stamp. In our previous example, in part 2 of this tutorial, we wrote the code, debug hello world. Then we wrote the command, end. This command, terminates our program, and will never run again, unless we reset basic stamp. Us, our code is running, only for one time. If we want to write a code, that will run for an infinite time, then we must use, the never-ending loop. There are two, ways to do that. The first, is to use the command, do loop. Whatever is inside, the do loop command, will run continuously. For example, suppose we have, two commands, command 1, and command 2. The way the infinite loop works, is by first running, command 1, and then command 2. When it reaches, the loop command, it starts all over again, by running command 1, then command 2, and so on. The second way, involves creating a label. A label is defined with a name, followed by a colon. Label's name can be whatever we want, but it cannot start with a number, and it cannot have the same name, with p basic commands. For example, we can define a new label with a name, main and a colon. To divert program execution to main label, we write the command, go domain. Now, all the commands after label main, and before the command go domain, will run continuously, the same way we discussed earlier. Before we light a LED, we must discuss how to connect it, to a port of basic stamp. Generally, there are two methods. You can see the first one, at the following schematic. The resistor, is for current limitation. Due to the fact, that basic stamp, can sync more current, we prefer to use the second method, as it is shown at the schematic. Notice, that we connect LEDs anode, to power supply, which is 5 volts. The resistor here is for the same reason, as in first method. In both methods, basic stamps port, where we connect the LED, must be set as an output. Keep in mind, that whenever basic stamp, is powered or resetted, all ports are set as inputs. Thus, we must change them to outputs, programmatically. There are many type of LEDs in the market. These, are common LEDs of green, red, and yellow color. These, are ultra bright LEDs, and you can find them lighting in different colors, like red, green, yellow, blue or even white. There is a special type of LED, that emits in the infrared of the spectrum. These LEDs are used in IR remote controls, but we can also use them in order to detect objects, for our robots. There are also multicolor LEDs, like the one you see in the video. This LED can emit to red and green. When it emits to both colors, our eyes see an orange color. We will first build the circuit we discussed earlier, to the board. Notice that the longer pin of the LED, is the anode. We will also use a small, 1 4th watts resistor of 180 ohms, for current limitation. We connect one pin of the resistor, to the input-output pin, B0, a basic stamp, B0, 
the other pin is connected to the cathode of the LED. The anode of the LED is connected to VDD, which is 5 volts. We connect the board to the serial port of the computer, and then we turn the power on. There are two simple commands, with which we can control basic stand ports as outputs. These are the low, and the high, commands. As an argument, they get the number of basic stamps input-output pin, we want to control. The argument can be a constant number or a variable. We will talk about variables later. The low command sets the pin to a logic zero, which is zero volts. The high command sets it to a logic high, which is five volts. Both commands place the pin to output mode. We connected the LED with the resistor to the port P0, and we used the second schematic. So, in order to light the LED, we must set the port to 0 volts. We can do that with the command low 0. Now we download the code by pressing the start button. And the LED lights. If we change the command from low zero to high zero the LED will stop emitting light. Now, the port is at 5 volts and no current is circulating. We can test the different type of LEDs and watch how they light. We also test the infrared LED. We can see that it lights only through the camera. Normally, we are not able to see infrared light with our eyes. We can find a laser from many sources, but the easiest is to get it from a laser pointer, like the one you see in the pictures. In the module you see in the video, I didn't remove the buttons. I short-circuited them instead. I also put a diode in order to drop the voltage at least 0.6 volts, so I can power the laser from a 5-volt power supply. The laser pointer was powered with batteries with total voltage of 4.5 volts. Here is the schematic diagram of the laser module. We connect the cathode of the laser to basic stamps port P0 and the other pin to power supply VDD. We program the laser the same way we program the LEDs. With the command low zero we light the laser and with the command high zero we switch it off. Thank you for watching.